Hi everyone. So we've been talking about um, Milankovitch's theory, which has three cycles in it, in his attempt to explain glacial advance and retreat hundreds of thousands of years ago. He used these three cycles that were known since the time of the Greeks. And Milankovitch was the person who put the three of them together to say, I think this is related to, um, to glacial expansion and retreat. This theory of his was promptly rejected until the 1970s when ocean sediments that use the methods that we discussed previously showed that, in fact, um, Milankovitch's three theories together do time that glacial advance and retreat very well. Now we're looking at these three theories to see if they explain our climate change now very well. And we're on the third th uh, cycle, which is precession. And to go back for a second, I just want to explain that the first cycle, which involved rotation, um, well, actually the first cycle, which involved revolution, the eccentricity cycle, we said that the um, pull of Jupiter actually impacts the orbit of the Earth by pulling the orbit of the Earth away from a circle and into a little bit more of an oval. Jupiter has a profound effect and can pull on the orbit of the Earth but the sun has the dramatic um, um, effect and can not only make the orbit of the earth into a essentially a circle, but it can affect the rotation of the earth. That's how much strength the sun has and how much force the sun has with its orbit. The other thing that can affect the orbit of the earth is the moon because the moon is so close. So that when we talk about the cycle that involves rotation, which is obliquity, we're talking about the impact of the sun and the moon on the Earth's rotation. With precession, we're talking about a wobble in the rotation of the Earth. And the wobble is caused by a, um, a difference in a bulge, just like a top that lasts quite a long time on top of a counter has a bulge near the top of it. And that bulge um, acts as a, as a surface where forces can act on the rotation of the top. So in a top, you are seeing a really fast rotation. And when it journeys across the counter of the table, you're seeing a revolution. And you're also seeing a wobble that is due to the gravitational pull on the bulge. Now, I'm going to compare that, and I had compared that to a pregnant woman who is carrying a bulge in front of her, which is upsetting her set of center of gravity, and you will see her um, wobble as a result of that bulge as well. The center of gravity is a little bit different. With the Earth, the Earth wobbles because the pull of the sun and the moon on the rotation actually expands the equator of the Earth. The, um, the Earth actually has a middle-aged bulge, and there is 43 more kilometers around the equator than there are pole to pole. As a result of that, that bulge causes a, an interference with the rotation of the Earth that is precession. So to bring that up and to go over here, how do I remember that precession is related to the bulge? That's not an easy one, but what I do say is that um, if you think of the word precession, you can think of the word precedent. And a precedent is an event that happens before that acts as a guide for now. So you hear about in all the, you know, the legal shows about, well, they established precedent, meaning that there was an act before that now informs the actions that we're taking now. In this case, with precession, this cycle actually is a, is a bulge in front that is creating an earlier equinox, an earlier spring equinox every year, just by a few minutes or seconds a year and moving the equinox back 
in the calendar. The Greeks knew about this 2,500 years ago, remarkably, and we can explore it today. So I wanted to show you um, a gyroscope there because the gyroscope is showing you a wobble in there. And if we look at the gyroscope, you see that it is rotating on the vertical plane on a, on a slant and you can time the rotation. So I'll time it with you. It starts now, it ends now. That's the rotation on the vertical slant. And there's a horizontal slant, which is mimicking our equator, and that is wobbling. And so you are seeing the wobble in the horizontal slant along the equator of the top. At the bottom in the axis, would be the revolution if it was traveling along the table. Now, it's not a great representation for what we need here, but it helps you to understand the difference between a rotation, a revolution, which is a travel in an orbit, and a wobble, which is on the horizontal plane. So I hope that helps. And the Earth here is showing its equatorial bulge due to the pull of the sun and the pull of the moon. So you're getting some heavy duty um, gravitational forces in here that produce this end result in some ways. You are noting here a rotation in a plane that is showing a horizontal wobble. So here is your rotation every 24 hours. Here is your plane of your um, of your wobble, which actually takes four. Uh, actually takes. I'm sorry, twenty three thousand years to make the cycle for this entire wobble, and and noting that each time that wobble moves forward slowly in that 20,000 year cycle, the equinox is moving a little bit earlier. I go to explain why this movement and this wobble is so slow compared to a top. It's really helpful to think about the mass of the, so the, mass of the earth as compared to the mass of a top that you play with. So, when we talk about the conservation of angular momentum, in other words, we're making sure that angular momentum, momentum is not created or destroyed, it's just transferred, we're thinking about the difference in how much momentum is related to mass. A top you can spin with your hand, can't do that with the Earth. And so the Earth spins like a sideways top with so much more mass that it, and, and a very relatively rapid rotation that it's difficult to change the direction of that entire mass to make that wobble. That is why the top has a very fast wobble, a pregnant woman has a moderate wobble, and the earth has an agonizingly slow waddle and wobble. It is because it is directly related to the conservation of angular momentum and the difference in the masses between those three objects. And then when we come back to look at the equinox and the result of this wobble, let's go over what you already know. You already know that in January, um, the southern hemisphere is getting the direct light from the sun. We went over that with our daylight hours lab. And in July, the northern hemisphere is getting the direct light from the sun. And in this wobble, that will shift the um, direction of the Earth's axis. Remember, obliquity shifts the angle a bit, and precession switches the entire direction of the Earth's axis, so that in about 11,000 years, the Earth's axis will be tilted in a completely different way um, and will have reversed the tilt so that it is tilting in the opposite direction. It will tilt in the opposite direction with a oblique angle that goes anywhere from 22 degrees to 24 degrees, but the direction will be different. So that 
in about 11,000 years from now, at this time, the northern hemisphere will be receiving the direct sunlight from the sun. And at this side of the orbit, the southern hemisphere will be receiving the direct sunlight from the sun. I agree with everything in regards to um, this, this um, graphic from the text. I do not agree with their representation of the months of the year. And so this means that January is always going to be, for the next 11,000 years, closer to the sun. And July is always going to be the farthest point in the sun's orbit, even 11,000 years from now. It'll be slightly different, but basically we'll be there. And so that the... Um, the uh, angle of the Earth will change, the months will not change. And so I agree with this diagram um, that has winter in January and summer for the Northern Hemisphere in January, 11,000 years from now. And this um, diagram is actually out of the University of Michigan, so I feel confident in saying that there's a typo in your text there. Um, when we take all of these cycles together, eccentricity, obliquity, precession, we're talking about um, differences in the amount of sunlight, the timing of sunlight, and the location of sunlight on Earth. These three cycles together did provide good explanations for the data that we were seeing about the advance and retreat of the Ice Age. They do not provide good explanations for the increase in temperature that we're seeing with our climate change over the last um, century. I would um, advise you to go to the NASA link on Blackboard that comes after this and review their um, review their animations because they're quite good. And I hope that you've learned quite a bit about Malkovich and can really talk about Malkovich with confidence. Talk to you on the next slide, on the next uh, video.